Hi everyone and welcome to Home Reno Collectibles where today we're taking a look at the Skyrim Funko Legacy Collection Daedric Warrior. So this is the second one of this line and basically, well, the last figure of this line for at least now anyway. I have already done a review of the other figure in the line, Dover Kim, so if you want to go ahead and check him out then uh, I will put a link in the description and on screen right now for that. But uh, let's go ahead and get this thing open and take a closer look. But before we do that, I uh, just want to mention I am trying to stick to one video per day just because I've got that much stuff to try and uh, get on here for you guys uh, but recently there haven't been many uploads just because I haven't been feeling all that well, so I haven't really sounded all that great. Wouldn't be good for videos. And also, I am sorting out my collection right now, uh, so everything is a bit of a mess, and I haven't really been able to get in here to do videos. But we're all back to normal now, so hopefully it should be back to a video per day. So uh, yeah, anyway, let's go ahead and take a closer look at this guy. And here's the figure out of the packaging and stood next to Dovakim there on the left. So uh, here the Daedric Warrior, you can see, is smaller. Uh, it stands six and a half inches to the top of that spike there at the tallest point. Uh, but the head height is like half an inch smaller than this guy over here. I would like the best armor in the game to be quite an imposing figure and maybe be bigger than this guy. But, eh, well, never mind. So taking a closer look here, this guy does look pretty fantastic. You can see that you've got a mixture of hard plastic and soft rubbery plastic and all these spikes. So these things aren't going to all snap off and stuff. They are nice and soft and flexible, which I really do like. Uh, what I don't like is the accessory that it came with. It's painted absolutely amazingly. It looks great and everything. It's just that in the game, me personally, like stats wise and just for the fact that I prefer swords and other weapons anyway in real life. To me, like a sword is quicker and if you want something that's got a good speed to like damage ratio, going with the uh, the two handed swords is a better way than going with like the battle axes and stuff. It's just to me, the axes are just kind of pointless in the game to be honest. Um, I think that with this guy having the shield, like that thing looks so unique in game. I would have loved to have the Daedric shield and maybe a sword maybe give us this axe too and, and, and some other things as well. I really think that with these Funko figures they look so amazing but they only come with limited amounts of uh, accessories com in comparison to what they could have come with. Plus there's only two figures in the line so it would have been really nice to have a few display options for those two figures instead of just coming with uh, you know one accessory right here. Even Dermakim had a sword and a dagger. Pretty much every single Daedric weapon looks better than anything else in the game in my opinion so I really would have liked to have seen them but never mind. Uh, the armor itself does look fantastic, like I said, with all that red. Uh, you do get a little bit of silver dry brushing in places as well, but really not all that much. It's not that noticeable. It's more noticeable on the helmet right there, and then down here on the axe in places. And then as for the articulation, the head up here uh, basically looks left and right. You do get a bit of up and down. It's on a ball joint, but as you can see, there is quite a lot of stuff in the way. Uh, the All of this area is flexible, so the arms can come up and rotate you know, pretty far, which is pretty nice. You have the single jointed elbow, you have a rotation there as well, and then your wrist can rotate, and also you've got the hinge there as well. Uh, your torso can move left and right. It may be on a ball joint, but it can't really move up and down. Just like the Dovahkin, there may be a ball joint in there, but you can't really utilize it. So just left and right there. Legs come out pretty far, and you do get a little bit of rotation up there, but it's not really intentional, I don't feel. Uh, they don't really go forward all that much because they do get limited. They move back a good way, though. Double jointed knees. And then at the feet, they go up and down and left and right. No ankle pivot. I do find this guy very hard to stand, to be honest. I don't know if it's the weight ratio or if it's the way that those feet are or anything, but I do actually find this guy quite hard to stand. And for that reason, I am not going to be putting him on the turntable for the end of this video. So uh, that is it, guys. I definitely do recommend this figure. I really, really do like it. I do think it should come with more accessories, just like a lot of the figures from the Legacy line. I just really hope that they do actually uh, carry on the Legacy line and give us some more armors. I mean, imagine, you know, the Dwarven armor, Elvish armor, the um, the glass armor and stuff like that. They would look absolutely amazing, you know, orcish. It would look fantastic. But for now, we just have to settle with the worst and best armors from the game. So thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and give it a like. And if you want to see more pictures of other stuff from my collection, check out my Instagram and get notified when uh, videos go live. Check out my Twitter. It's homerino1234. Both the links are in the description below. And for more reviews of anything else from my collection, I can't really say more legacy collection figures because there aren't any more, at least not Skyrim ones anyway, uh, then go ahead and subscribe. So thanks for watching guys and I'll see you next time.